Hi, we're here with John Piper, who's the head of the Macy's Design Studio. Can you tell us about how this has changed so much from your home open space? Well, quite a lot, as a matter of fact. As we moved to our new space, we were able to design it. Uh, from the ground up with our developer Russo Development and the architects and the engineers so we were able to lay out the building in the various areas for sculpture and metalwork and carpentry and paint in the center and the balloons behind back behind uh, a wall so it wouldn't get dust and to have the overhead clear space for our five-ton crane that can go from end to end of the building and they put in these wonderful tubular skylights so we can get natural light coming right through. It's not only energy efficient and cost savings from that standpoint, but it's great for us because then we see all of the floats and the work that we're doing in daylight. Right. Just okay. like, look like Exactly, exactly. So all of the paint colors now can be matched perfectly and we have the space to maneuver within here and uh, all of the power we need for our tooling and uh, it's a great, great opportunity. What is your biggest hardship in trying to build a plant? That's an excellent question. <laughs> it really is. Um, uh, you know, I think the, f the first step is always the hardest. And it's trying to find, trying to find the bit of magic that's, that's in the idea that's going to grow. Because once we get started, once we have a concept that we really like, you know, we will do sketches on paper, pencil and paper, and markers of color, and then we really get going on it. And you can see that it takes off on its own with a certain energy, and that's when we bring in the computer and the models, and then once we have working drawings and CAD and that, it goes to the floor, but it never stops growing. I have the most amazing collaborative group of artists and artisans working here, so everyone's always taking it and, and taking it a step further and thinking about all the details because all of the floats have to be engineered in addition to design and built so that they can go through the Lincoln Tunnel the night before. And that takes a little bit of extra work as well. So I think once we get that first step going, from that point it just makes up makes momentum keep going and going and going until we hit today when we get to unveil them for everybody and show everybody all the new floats for this year's Thanksgiving Day Parade. What's your favorite float that you designed throughout the years? The next one. <laughs> <laughs> What's the float you're most excited about this year? This year? Boy, that's hard too because they're so diverse this year. I mean, every year all of the floats are very unique. They're very individual. We have a float from Zuzu Pets, which is um, these wonderful toy and, and cartoon characters come to life in an entirely new environment that they call a Zooniverse. I mean, it's something that you that you have to imagine because it's out and beyond everything. And then we have a float, which is our tribute to the Statue of Liberty, its 125th anniversary, the torch and the hand of Lady Liberty that is sculpted in exact detail. And we did so much research and got reference on um, this and our sculptors did just an absolutely amazing job. Lauren Harshman, Eric Hudsmith uh, sculpted this thing so finely and the rest of the team, our carpenters, our welders, John Chaney, Beth Lucas, our painter, there's like 12 layers of paint on there to get that exact patina of the copper aged over time. Um, Danny Jones painstakingly glued on six by six pieces of foil to get the metallic gold of, of the torch. And that's very naturalistic, realistic in detail. And then we got to have all kinds of fun and play with a giant polar bear, um, <laughs> a cowboy hat and a top hat. Yes, that's, can you tell us a little bit about oh, this? Oh, sure. This is, you know, this is so much fun because this is all about us. It's hats off to our heritage. This is Macy's own heritage. Now, right now you look at this float and you say, well, I, I don't understand. And that's because the real heritage comes with what's going on the float. Our leader for the last 10 years who cut the ribbon and took us down the career route is Robin Hall. And Robin Hall always had with him his dapper top hat. Now before him, the leader of the parade, was Jean McFadden, and she came from Texas. So she always started the parade cutting the ribbon and tipping her hat, which was a cowboy hat, every time. So we decided we would pay tribute to these great leaders of the last 25 years of the parades for our 85th, and add to them 18 more characters who have been in the parade over the last 
six, eight decades. I'm talking about going back to Felix the Cat, oh. one of the original balloon characters, Betty Boop, Popeye, Olive Oil, Smokey Bear, Yogi Bear, Barney, you name it, Mickey Mouse, they're all there. They're all in the They're boat? all going to be there. All of these wonderful characters who have been balloons over the years, and these two characters well, riding you, in well, their well, hats. Yeah, they'll be on the hats. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Gene will be on the cowboy hat. Robin will be in the top hat. They'll be coming down the parade route with all the other characters.